Hi, everyone. Welcome to QPixel Studio and welcome to another Learn with Michael's class. My name is Haley and I am so excited for this project. Thanksgiving is one of my favorite holidays. I love the food. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, but first and foremost, I just want to uh, shout out that uh, we will be using the QPixel app for this project. So uh, if you haven't already, please download the app if you're going to be creating with us in real time. Uh, thank you so much for joining, by the way. Uh, you can use this promo code right here when you log into the app and you'll have access to absolutely everything for, is it 30 days? Next 30 days? 14 days, excuse me, 14 days. Uh, so you'll have plenty of time to finish up your uh, Thanksgiving table placement cards uh, with the app if uh, you don't do so today. So I'll show you how to make uh, one. Uh, I'll walk you through my process and the materials that I'm using. There are so many different ways that you can use the app to make uh, the place cards, but I'll just show you the one way um, and we'll dive into some more ways that we can do this uh, in a little bit. But go ahead and download the QPixel app if you haven't already. And if you would like to learn more about QPixel and how it works, of course, I'll give you a brief overview before we get started. But we actually do have an introductory class uh, on Learn with Michael's YouTube that you can go back and watch and get the full spiel. Uh, we answer a ton of questions uh, from users like you that, are, that joined us in real time. Uh, so that should be, you know, the full overview, absolutely everything you need to know. But if you have any questions today, creating with me in real time, I have Shirley on uh, the Zoom chat monitoring that. So you can place your questions in there. If you have a question specifically for me, Shirley's just going to shout that out and let me know. Uh, but definitely use the chat. Uh, you can also use that question mark icon in the app and our support team will uh, be able to help you out in real time as well. Real people. So that's always good. I'm also joined by Nick on the cameras. He's monitoring all four cameras in here. This is how we do it in the Cupixel studio uh, where we create uh, content, you know, artist-led classes for any medium, any subject matter, you name it. Uh, you can definitely go and explore everything that we have to offer for art classes and experiences, uh, crafts, all that good stuff on the app after we're done with this uh, project today. So, Nicholas, you wanna show everyone the phone? Thank you so much. Nicholas, is that your full name? It is your full name. <laughs> Shot in the dark. Uh, okay, so uh, this is the main feed. When you uh, open the app, this is what you'll see. What we're going to be working with today is my studio. So that is that little icon at the bottom of the screen, the little plus sign in the center, tap that, and we're gonna go to gallery. We're gonna be using the gallery tab and the text tab for this project today. So I'll give you all a few minutes to kind of do that and I'll repeat that in just a second while I go over the materials that you'll need for this project. First and foremost, you'll need a device stand. Uh, this is the Cubixel device stand. They are available on Michael's Online. If you don't have them uh, already, you can definitely use like a tall cup. Bring my coffee in here uh, for a quick cameo to show you that you can just place your phone right on top of something tall uh, and place your paper underneath it. We'll get into that in a second. Uh, so you'll need this for tracing. Okay, I also have uh, a piece of cardstock paper. The size that I'm working on today is, I believe, a uh, six by seven, which is kind of strange. You know, I cut it up uh, so it's nice and, uh, well, first of all, big enough for you all to see, but uh, a good size for us to kind of fold and create a larger size of this kind of little card here. So that's the size that I'm working on today. You can, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, this is the card that I'm working with. So I used a four by six here and uh, the, what did I say this was? Six by seven? Yes, six by seven. So you'll have a lot less, uh, it'll be a little bit more long when it's folded in half, a uh, little less negative space in the bottom here, but you can do any size you'd like uh, depending on how many you're making, how big your table setting is, um, how much room you have to work with. So. In addition, you'll need a pencil for tracing, an eraser, 
Uh, a ruler always comes in handy because I'm going to mark where the halfway point is. I'm going to be working with some colored pencils today. I find that they're you know, quick and simple, uh, especially if you're making a ton of these. Uh, I'll walk you through my process with those in a way that you can kind of speed up the coloring process. And then uh, last but not least, I have some gold gel pens to create a nice shiny metallic name. I love, I love the chrome. I love the metallics. So that's just, I'm impartial to that. So I have those uh, to fill in my letters. Okay. Yes. Okay. Shirley, thank you so much. Shirley reminded me uh, to tell you guys something very important. Uh, if you stick with the um, membership after your 14 day trial ends with this promo code, you are sent a device stand. So this comes with your membership. So you can purchase a device stand and then get 14 days free on the app or that's correct, right? 14 days. Or you can subscribe to the app directly and then get the device stand for free. So uh, definitely keep that in mind. Thank you, Shirley, for reminding me. Um, this will definitely make such a difference with your creations, uh, makes it so much easier. It does half the work for you. Okay, so just to remind everybody from the main feed, when you open the app, this is what you see. We're gonna go to my studio, which is that plus sign icon at the bottom center of the screen. We're going to be using the text tab and we're going to be using the gallery tab to trace today. So let's start with, uh, let's trace an image. And uh, it doesn't matter if you trace, you know, the name or the image first. Uh, you kind of want to keep in mind the uh, composition, I guess, you're going to be using. So I'll start by choosing my little image. And while I do this and walk you all through, I, I, I'm going to, hello, Ooh, I stuttered, sorry. Uh, I am going to trace one of your names. So drop your name in the chat. And then the first person to do so, I'm going to use your name here. And Shirley will let me know. Sound good? Yeah. Beth? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Beth was quick. Hi, Beth. Thanks for joining. Uh, we'll do Beth. Perfect. So you know what? Actually, I'll start with the text because I think that's a little bit more exciting and uh, a little bit easier to decide where you're going to place your imagery. So I didn't think you'd be that quick, Beth. Thank you so much. Let's go to text. Okay. We're going to go to add text and we're going to type out Beth, B-E-T-H. Obviously, you'd be using the uh, names of your guests that you're expecting to have over for Thanksgiving or whatever dinner party celebration, doesn't even need to be dinner, you know, tea party, whatever you have, whatever hosting, whatever event that you're hosting. Uh, the first or last name, first and last name, excuse me, uh, you can definitely do that. Use your, you know, your own creative uh, direction here. I'm, I'm having a hard time finding my words, but... We'll get warmed up in a bit. Okay, so you can choose whatever font you would like, but I am going to be using this font right here because I love it's so elegant. And I also love that we can use these little uh, swirls to create kind of like the look of like pumpkin vines. So I'll walk you through that as well. So when you're done writing out your name, you get that green check mark, you know you're good to head to trace. So before I even had to trace one second, I'm going to take my ruler and I'm just going to find my halfway point on the side here. So I've got seven inches, just going to mark really quickly at three and a half. Just so I know I want everything down on this bottom half of the paper but that's just because I'm gonna be folding my paper over to create like a little paper stand. You can just do it flat, it's totally up to you. Another thing you can do, which is fun, is you can trace like an image of, um, of a leaf, like a maple leaf, and cut that out in the shape of the leaf. And then really all you're doing is adding the name within the leaf, just some ideas. All right, so. I'm good to head to trace. I'm going to tap start. And I have smart trace on. So what that means is 
the app is looking for four corners of my paper. Once it's able to find it, it superimposes what you are tracing onto your paper. So from here, you can pinch the screen to, screen to zoom in and just follow the lines that you see on your screen. Before I get started with tracing, I'm going to be using the drag feature. So as you can see where I marked my little halfway point, I'm gonna be tracing on this bottom half of the paper. So I'm going to tap the screen, tap drag, you'll see that purple border. And I'm going to move this down here. And then I'm also going to shrink it a bit so that I have more room for some pumpkins or leaves or whatever I feel like adding to my name card to embellish it. So I think this is the perfect little place to go. Maybe I'll actually bring it in a little bit closer. And I'm gonna be working with this negative space over here to trace a pumpkin or whatever I feel. So I'm gonna grab my pencil, I'm gonna pinch the screen to zoom in, bring my transparency bar down quite a bit so I can see my lines as well as the lines in my screen. By the way, if I'm going too fast for anybody, let me know. I'm happy to repeat anything you want me to repeat, anything you missed or anything you want to hear again. And I'm just going to trace the lines that I see. I like to do quick little motions, like little sketchy motions, especially with text, you know, where it's something that's so precise and straight. Having a looser hand can actually give you a little bit more control. But Nick, at any point, if this is too light, let me know and I can put more pressure. Hmm. Looks good. All right. Beth is a good name for this because with this font, that's going to be fun. We'll create some fun little pumpkin vines. All right. Mine too. Really? Yes. <laughs> that's so funny. Well, Elizabeth, but oh, sorry. Elizabeth. Uh, oh my God. I almost called her Elizabeth. Beth, let me know if Beth is short for, yes, it is? Elizabetta? Oh, that's a beautiful name. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing. My name is Haley, short for Haley. I always wish I had a cool nickname, like name that could be, you know, shortened into a cute little nickname like that. Okay, so before I even add those little vine elements, just tracing what I see here. And it does not need to be perfect. After all, the idea is that you're gonna be making multiple, right? So don't fixate on anything. I mean, I can promise you, I can almost guarantee that your guests are not going to be uh, overanalyzing your work, you know? They're just going to love that you added this little personal element to your event, whether it be Thanksgiving or any any event that you're hosting, any gathering. It's such a nice little added element that can just make your guests feel more at home. Just a little bit of effort goes a long way, I think. All right. All right. So like I said, I am going to be kind of turning the font or making some little free handed tweaks to, you know, mimic the look of pumpkin vines, but I'll stick with the tracing for now. And I'm actually going to go back to artwork and I'm gonna to go to gallery and I'm going to select the pumpkins that I want to add to my name card here. Like I said, actually earlier, it does not need to be pumpkins. It can be this little uh, berry botanical thing you see here. It can be all these leaves blowing in the wind. You can create something pretty meta and create a little sign within your name card uh, with some pumpkins and leaves in the back. Uh, but I think, what do we think? Shirley or Nick, which one do we want to do? I'm definitely going to do pumpkins out of these three. Which do you think? I honestly like the top left. You like the top left? I do too. All right, here we go. Got my green check mark, so I know I'm good to head to trace. 
And again, four corners, the app is able to find my paper and superimpose right onto it. By the way, this is something that I should have mentioned earlier, but if you are working uh, without a stand, so if you're just kind of placing your phone flat on something and your paper underneath it, um, I would definitely suggest one, using the wide angle camera and two, turning smart trace off just for a simple projection. So you can kind of just place your paper uh, underneath. And then of course, again, use the drag feature to scale it and reposition it wherever you'd like. You could still use smart trace if your paper is small enough and is able to get in the screen, but that's an option I just thought I would mention. But I'm back to smart trace. So now I'm gonna use the drag feature again. And I definitely wanna shrink this quite a bit and bring this down to the bottom half of my paper. So I want it to fill that negative space, but also kind of embellish my, my text. So I think this is a good area. Tap drag where I'm when I'm happy with where it is and then zoom in. Something you wanna keep in mind. Sometimes the corners of your paper can flip up a little bit. So I always keep tape nearby because then you can just put some clear tape on the corners and make sure it doesn't lift and warp the image you're tracing. So, okay, perfect. So clear tape, you can still see that corner. Now I'm just gonna do what I've been doing and look through my screen and start tracing. Start with the pumpkins first. But if you noticed that middle tab, the photo tab, you know, not just gallery or text, you can upload your own photo. So, I mean, this might take you a while, but how cool would it be if instead of names, everyone saw their face? Oh, they'd know exactly where to sit, unless you have twins attending your party, identical twins, then it might be a little confusing, but how cool would that be? I'm almost upset I didn't think of that sooner, <laughs> but you can upload a photo of your own pumpkin, your own fall elements, anything from your camera roll. You can upload, convert it into an outline and trace it just like you're tracing the gallery images. Again, I like to just be quick with a light hand, so adding little pressure. So I know anything that I don't like, any mistakes, for lack of a better word, I can just erase it without having to put in too much elbow grease, if you know what I mean. But how are we doing? Uh, if you have any special Thanksgiving plans this year, I'd love to hear what you've got going on, drop it in the chat and I'll have a uh, Shirley let me know. Okay. Okay. On on mine or on theirs? Oh, I see. But everything's good now? Okay, cool. Great. Yeah, any any special plans for Thanksgiving this year? I never really do anything super special. I have such a small family. Uh, my uncle hosts, uh, he makes a mean turkey. Makes a mean turkey, yeah, he, he, makes, he made it from scratch. Mm -hmm. No, you know what I mean. Um, and we just, we're a family that loves board games, card games, so. Dinner of 35. Wow. Lots of name cards. So I would suggest, you know, I wouldn't say do something like this, add an image like this to embellish your name card. Uh, maybe the maple leaves, because you can just kind of uh, shade them in with, you know, different colors and it's really quick. You don't have to do any, um, you know, blending or anything like that. Super straightforward. Um, some. Yes. How did you get the image to project? 
So, okay. How do you get the image to project? That is a great question. Um, as long as all four corners, when you're using smart trace, by the way, so that icon at the top left of your screen is a bluish green color. You know, you have smart trace on and what smart trace does is it looks for the four corners of your paper. So if I were to have just this white paper on my white table in front of me, the app probably wouldn't be able to recognize it with smart trace on, even if all four corners are in frame. So that's why I have this dark paper underneath because it creates a contrast that allows the app to see those four corners clearly. So that's with smart trace. As long as all four corners are in frame, you should be able to get a, uh, a projection right onto your paper. Um, but if you are having trouble uh, with that, I would turn Smart Trace off and uh, just work with a simple projection. I hope that answers your question. And maybe if you, I don't know if you can do it because you already know it. Yeah. Studio and how to upload a photo. Absolutely. Do you think I should finish up real quick with the yeah. leaves? Okay, let me finish up with this tracing really quick and then I'll show you, I'll go back and show you how oh did you mean a photo like from your camera roll no not the image how, how do you go to a situation where the image is projected? i see okay give me just one second i'll be really quick with these you know what? i think i'll just simplify and do a little less of these leaves It doesn't need to be perfect, whether it's your leaves or your uh, your pumpkins. I mean, and everything in, in nature is funky. No two things look the same. So I am done tracing. So before I go back and show you, um, what I like to do is bring my transparency bar down all the way and then bring it back up just to make sure I've got everything. And more or less, I do. Like I said, I left out some leaves, but that is just my my personal preference here. So let's go back to artwork and to answer your question or to show you how you get your image to project. I would go to the homepage. Homepage, okay. Oh, look at that. We got a time lapse. Uh, this is uh, this is new, this pop-up. I'm very excited uh, to show you. So uh, anytime you trace, the app generates a time lapse. Uh, in a video that you can, you know, save to your phone and share wherever you'd like. It's a really cool feature that uh, we don't talk about enough. So I wanted to shout that out uh, while it's right in front of my face. But um, let's go back to the home feed. So when you first open the app, this is the screen that you're on. At the bottom of your screen, you'll see my studio. This is where we're working today. That plus sign icon in the center, you can tap that. And you see these three tabs at the top, gallery, photos, and text. This is where you can either choose from um, our selection of gallery images. You can upload your own photo, convert it into an outline to trace, or you can create your text design here and choose the font that you'd like. But let's just choose the same uh, fall pumpkin outline that I did. And when you see that green check mark on anything that you decide to trace, whether it's photo, uh, gallery image, or text, green check mark, green border, you know you can start. And again, this is with Smart Trace on. So go back one more time. Trace. Interesting. That's not supposed to happen. <laughs> okay, well. Uh, with Smart Trace on, so that blue green icon at the top left of your screen, that means the app is looking for your paper. So even if you kind of move something here, it'll just realign. So it tracks your paper by searching for four corners. If you are not able to capture all four corners or for some reason the app's not recognizing your paper, you can turn Smart Trace off and just have this simple projection. We'll bring it to the white just so you can see it. And then with uh, Smart Trace off, I would just place your phone uh, on something tall and flat like this coffee mug. So just bring this in really quick. Nick, since I'm done tracing, is that okay? Okay. My device stand to the side because I'm done using it. 
but this is smart trace off. So you just get the simple projection. Then you can use the drag feature to position it where you'd like on your paper. So things are not tracked with smart trace off. So you just have to be mindful that if you, you know, nudge your phone or if you nudge your paper, you might have to either, you know, manually align your phone or use the drag feature to realign uh, the image to the progress that you've already made, if that makes sense. Absolutely. You can add, but you can do whatever you like. Anytime you're creating with the app or any creation in general, I hope you know that whatever you create is entirely up to you. Um, but you can absolutely, and I've done this before, uh, you can take a picture of your freehand drawings and you can upload it to the app if you ever want to recreate something you've created. Um, so that's fun, fun little shout out. But we do have tons of artist-led classes on the app. Uh, we call them experiences because they're not classes. It's not boring like that. Uh, we have a ton on the app that don't utilize the technology and we walk you through uh, some fun freehand creations, um, different artists, different subject matters, and different styles. So uh, I think that's in the category create without tracing, Shirley. Is that right? Yeah. So. Create without tracing that category. We have a ton of uh, guided experiences that don't use the tech and we just do something freehanded. So yes, you could also go back. Last thing, Nick, can you see the phone? Hey, look at that, a nice little uh, time lapse again. Oop, browse, okay, browse. That icon at the bottom right of your screen, you can use the filter, tap without tracing, and then if you're impartial to uh, a certain artist, you can select your artist. And then you can see there's a ton of different experiences just from me that you can uh, create with without using the tracing technology. Tons and tons and tons. So that's just my 47 experiences. Let's see if we don't select an artist. Without tracing, 173 experiences. So you've got options, my friends. All right, I'm gonna put the phone to the side because I'm done tracing, but if anyone wants to see anything else at any point, please let me know. Now it's time to move on to some freehanded stuff. So first things first, Nick, is my paper where it is? It's okay. Bring it in a little bit closer. I taped it so it wouldn't move. Good? Okay, cool. All right. Let me get rid of this little piece of tape. Okay, so before I get into coloring, I want to add those little fun little vine elements. So let's start with this one in the B. All I'll do is kind of create like a little loop to start at the end here. Then maybe you can create another little loop and then another loop. Just have fun with it. One down here if you'd like. Where do you see kind of like the uh, anywhere that kind of flips up? A nice little easy way you to add some curly little elements, little coils, if you will. All right, now I'm just going to go back and kind of just smooth out my lines because I do that quick little sketchy movement. So I want to create something, you know, solid so I can color it in with my gold in a little bit. And you can also clean up your lines with an eraser. But this is where I feel confident to add a little bit more pressure. I'm curious to hear what everyone's favorite Thanksgiving dish is. I'll start. Mine's green bean casserole. Oh my God. I love it. I love it. I asked my mom to make an extra big batch this year. Oh, 
So good. So good. She always makes it, even if she's not hosting, which like, I, like I said, she's not, my uncle is, um, she makes it every year. Oh, I love it. It's my favorite. So let me know what yours is. I also love pumpkin a good pie. pumpkin pie. Pumpkin pie. That's a good one. Really? Oh, I love stuffing. Okay, that's fair. Um, I love it. Butternut squash. Getting hungry. Um, what else? No, I love stuffing, especially when there's like a little cranberry and walnut in there. Green bean casserole. Yep. I know. I'm I'm almost mad at myself for asking. Um, mac and cheese. I know a lot of people include mac and cheese in their Thanksgiving spread. It's got it's, it's mac and cheese is always welcome. Um, yeah, I mean, like, it's so funny how some Thanksgiving foods are just that Thanksgiving foods. I mean, I guess it goes with the season, you know, the harvest season. So you've got your, all your gourds, all your squashes and pumpkins and what have you corn, love corn. That's another thing. Love corn. Mm-hmm. Love it. Apple pie and apple crisp. Ooh, so good. Yes. All right. Before I, before my mouth starts watering, um, as if I'm not stuttering enough today, let's add some saliva to the mix. No, uh, <laughs> I'm going to move on and start to color in my little elements here. So the last thing I'm going to do is go in with my gold and uh, fill in the lettering. 433 we're making great timing um explain the tracing this will okay so if it wasn't for me explaining all the tracing and you know answering questions and communicating with you guys which I love by the way if I were doing this on my own I'd be done with the tracing in under five minutes um so it is a lot quicker than it seems but let's move on to coloring in the pumpkins and I'm just gonna be grabbing my set of 12 colored pencils and I'll start with uh, some yellow and some orange and some brown for the pumpkins and now if you're making a lot like your 35 guests whew, and you're using colored pencils to color in some pumpkins let me walk you through a quick and speedy process a quick and speedy way that you can get this done so you start with like your lightest color in the pumpkins which is typically yellow and I'm going to make all my pumpkins more or less the same color. You can mix in some different colors too. You know, use your own. Listen, listen to your heart. Whatever you want to do, you know. But I am just kind of coloring all in the pumpkins. Doesn't matter if you get in the stems with the yellow. Because yellow is the lightest color in general, right? And there's uh, always a little bit of yellow everywhere. Whoop, whoop. Just throw your pencil too. That's part of the process. I'm back. Sorry about that. Uh, quick shading all over. Sorry? Um, party time. Say party time? Yeah. Party time. Excellent. Anyone get that reference? I hope so. All right. Quick shading all in some yellow. And then we can take, actually, let's go to the darkest color. You know, you want to add some definition in your grooves here. You can take a brown, just kind of go over all those lines that you traced. Then the grooves you can even go over the stem. So for me, if I were hosting Thanksgiving with my teeny tiny little family, we could all fit in an SUV. Um, I'd probably do something like this because I know that with little, a small guest list, uh, it won't take me much time. And honestly, I mean, maybe you're all different. Maybe you guys are different. 
but I love creating anything. Honestly, I think, um, obviously if you're, if you're stressed on top of everything else that you have to prepare for Thanksgiving, uh, if you're hosting, you know, maybe this won't be the same for you, but I love just kind of shutting out the world around me and just focusing on a creation. So having to spend more time on something for me personally, that's fine. It's just a matter of, of course, finding the time to do so. These little DIY projects, whatever it may be, and the options are endless, by the way, endless. Um, they're just rewarding. I don't know. It's just nice to uh, one, kind of create, craft something with your own hands. And two, like I said, just kind of shut everything else out for a bit and focus on uh, focus on one thing. So after I've outlined all my little grooves with the brown, I'm going to go in with the orange. I'm just going to kind of go all around these grooves, leaving some areas kind of in the center of each groove. It's like a little highlight area. And by the way, if you want to just go in with just orange and color in all your pumpkins in just a solid orange, you can absolutely do that. You know, this is a fun little thing, a cute little way to personalize your spread, your table uh, decor and everything and make your guests feel more at home. We're not aiming for, you know, the next Mona Lisa here. We're not aiming for realism or anything like that. Just have fun with it. Apology. Can you guys hear that? Apologies. Yeah, that was me. Sorry. All right. I like to go back in the grooves and add a little bit more pressure with the orange. But like I said, it does not have to be perfect. Yeah, there's so many different ways that you can um, use the app to create your table uh, name card settings. Um, like I said, the cutting out, like tracing a shape of like a maple leaf and then cutting that out um, and writing the name on the inside. I think that is a really cool idea. Um, you can do like one of those little tags and kind of, you know, use that as your paper and kind of tie it around your, your silverware. Like I said, you can just have a basic square sheet of paper Place it out on the plate. Tons of different ways that you can do this. And tons of different DIY crafts that you can do with the technology next month. I hope you all join us for this. I'm very excited for it. We are doing another Michaels class, uh, our fourth one, uh, with some ornaments, some holiday ornaments. So uh, whether it's, you know, for your Christmas tree or if you just like to kind of uh, decorate, you know, the staircase or your, you know, your vanity area, your mantle with some little DIY garland, uh, we are going to be using the tech to trace on ornaments. So I'm very excited for that. Um, I think I'm actually going to do that for my own tree this year. I'm excited. That will be on December 7th. I don't even know if that's um, up yet on the website. I could be wrong, but stay tuned if it's not. Do I? Do I get real Christmas trees? No, I do not. No, I... Um, what's the sensory thing for me? Like the, the sap? Oh, yeah. I just can't do it. It's messy. It's super messy. And then you don't have to get new ones every year, you know? Yeah, it's just hard to justify all that. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's definitely, you know, more special. I think, you know, it's like a like a nice little activity that you can do with the family, you know, go out and pick your tree. So I get it for sure. It's just not for me. I'm just going in with a um, darker brown to kind of color in those stems. And then in a second, we'll get to the fun part with the gold. Embellish that. But we are very close to being done. So if anyone has any questions in the next few minutes or so, definitely drop them in the chat so I can answer them while I'm still here creating with you all. But of course, you can always just tap the question mark icon on the app and contact our support team at any time. You know, uh, like I said, real people. So depending on where you are in the world, if you, uh, you know, you reach out for support at midnight, you might have to wait a little bit. That's okay. We're here to help you whenever we can with whatever you need. All right. So now I'll just take some reds, some browns, and just kind of lightly shade in those leaves. Not doing anything too crazy. What's nice about anything that you choose to trace is that you can use your own, like use your best judgment. You know, you can decide to leave stuff out. You can decide to add stuff in. It's all completely up to you. This one I'll do like a little mix. I'll do a little bit of yellow and some red with it. Oh, Nick, I completely forgot to mention. Thank you so much. Yes. Uh, can, by the way, do you have a mic? You you are not mic'd up. So let me just repeat what Nick said. Um, okay. Well, if you can't, uh, Nick encourages you all to share your creations on spaces, whether it's uh, this that we're creating together right now or any creation down the line as you're enjoying your uh, two-week trial. Um, spaces is that uh, fourth tab at the bottom of any experience you join. Um, so you can just snap a picture of your finished artwork and share it with our community. And we love it. Oh, we're always checking and seeing what people are doing. Um, so you can comment on other people's work. You can get you can ask questions and get some creative and technical advice in the comments. Uh, we are constantly checking that. Um, and nothing makes me happier than seeing someone, you know, seeing someone's work and one of my experiences. Um, I love it. You know, selfishly, I just love it. So yes, please do share your creations, uh, whether it's today or tomorrow or next week or two weeks from now. Love to see it. That is an incredibly purple, purple. So I'm gonna go in with some red and soften that a bit. All right. We are looking good. So now, if you ask me, this is the star of the show. I love a little pop of chrome and I love gold. Love it. So I've got two options here for no reason, by the way. I think one's a gel pen, one's a ballpoint pen. They're the same thing, if you ask me. Um, Now that everything is kind of, you know, situated with my text, and I've got more of a solid outline to fill in. I'm just gonna go in with my eraser and just that very corner and just clean up some of these lines. Um, because you know the the ink will cover it, but there's always like just a small chance that if you have too much pencil, too much graphite on your paper, that it can kind of 
create a muddy look when it mixes with um, other mediums and other colors. So that's what I'm doing, just cleaning up some lines inside and outside my letters. Thank you, Beth, for letting us use your name today. <laughs> And Beth, I'm happy to send this to you as well. If you'd like, um, you can reach out through support or you can share um, a photo of your artwork and I can uh, drop you a comment. We can figure that out behind the scenes. Otherwise, I'm, I'm more than happy to hold on to this. The next Beth I meet, or <laughs> I was gonna say, Nick, you could give this to your, your sister. <laughs> That's her middle name. So, um, Brett, oh, I'm more than happy to cosplay as a Beth. Halloween just passed. And there's always next year. All right. So I always like to take my eraser and just with a light hand, just soften my lines after I've cleaned everything up. Now I'm just going to take my gold pen and I'm going to start by outlining everything. We'll go and fill it in after I outline each letter. You can also, I think this is definitely a look. Um, you can do just gold uh, lettering and a gold outline of whatever you traced, or you can do uh, use just like, you know, a fall color palette. Uh oh, that can happen. Add a little bit of a smudge. This is very pigmented, but that's okay. Just be mindful of where you're resting your hand. But um, yeah, you can use like just a red pen and do a red outline in your uh, little visuals, your embellishments, orange, purple, all that good stuff and leave your gold in the letters. Or if gold's not your thing, metallic is not your thing, that's totally fine. All right, now I'm going to be careful of all the work I just did. I don't want to create any more smudging. I'm just going to go back and kind of shade that in, make these letters pop. Oh, me too. I love a good gel pen. Very satisfying. I have so many white gel pens. Oh my gosh. Gel pens are, I think a lot of people hear gel pens and they think of like, you know, like journaling or doodling. And while that's great and it's very satisfying and beautiful tool to use for um, all that, you can use these in like mixed media projects. I love to use my white gel pen to add highlights to any illustrations, sometimes even paintings. That is a great question. Sorry, what was the name of the person that asked? Our dear Beth. <laughs> Beth. Um, Beth asked for everyone uh, who didn't hear Nick. Beth asked, what is the largest size I can create on? Oh my gosh. 
our CEO, a lot would love that question. <laughs> um, you can create on canvases as big as 36 by 36 inches. So three square feet. Um, that's just what we've discovered in our own kind of like, you know, uh, trial and tests. Um, Alad, our lovely founder and CEO, uh, he loves huge canvas paintings. He loves them. And he has a way to um, use the tech on those large surfaces. So there is some ways that you can kind of work around, not work around, but work with your device stand to do just that. So whether that's kind of stacking your device stand on, on a couple books or just elevating it a little bit more, using the wide angle camera feature. Um, there's so many different ways that you can make it work on huge surfaces. You could definitely do walls too. If you use smart trace off, you could just kind of project on a wall. I'm sure you can share your screen from one phone to another. If you want to go really big, there's tons of different ways. We're always, 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 um, you know, testing and researching ways that we can, you know, introduce the tech in different, you know, areas of creation. Like this works on shirts and tote bags and fabrics and shoes, basketballs it works on, pumpkins. Uh, if you joined us for our last class last month. Um, but yeah, we have an entire category on the app um, with Alad, and he walks you through all of the different ways that he gets the technology to work on super big canvases. So I would definitely advise you check those out. Those are very, very short and informative videos, and they're really cool and exciting. Uh, the idea is to kind of get your, you know, get you inspired to create on larger surfaces. So definitely check that out. Great question, Beth. And I'm done. I'm done with your name, Beth. So let me hold this up for you here. Beth. <laughs> um, this is how this turns out. Of course, you know, uh, explaining everything made this project a lot longer than it typically would, than if you were to just focus in on it and get in the zone. Um, but of course you can go back and you can add to it. You can uh, add more free-handed elements, little swirls and lines to kind of further embellish your names. Uh, I like to just take that halfway point that I marked in the beginning. Thank you so much, Beth. You've got a beautiful name. It was a nice name to work with we have your place card, your name card for your Thanksgiving uh, dinner, whatever it is you're hosting, whatever dinner party or event you're going to be hosting in the near future. you got a little project to enjoy in preparation for it. Um, a nice, nice little project for you to kind of, I think, if you ask me, take a break from the stressful part of uh, planning and hosting whatever event it may be. Um, and get a little creative, have a nice little creative break while also preparing for your event. So I hope you all enjoyed this one, everyone. I hope it inspired you to create some more things and, you know, maybe got those DIY gears turning. Uh, maybe you have some other ideas. I'd love to hear them as well. So definitely share with us. You can always reach out uh, afterwards through uh, the app by, of course, tapping that question mark icon at the top right of your screen. Um, and you can always just reach out to us directly uh, at any time. What else? Definitely share your artwork on Spaces if you are uh, going to stick around on the app and finish this project. Maybe you created with me in real time. Maybe you're just, you know, getting all the information you need to kind of continue this project later on whenever it may be, whenever your name cards are done or just one of them, share on spaces. I can't wait to see how they turned out. Um, and you can also leave your feedback or any questions in your spaces post as well. So and we're live every week. Thanks, Nick. We are live every Wednesday. Uh, we do live classes uh, here in the studio, same studio, Wednesday nights. Uh, they are free and open to anybody on the app. Uh, but you know, with your trial, you'll have access to absolutely everything else too. So if you want to create with me in real time again this week, 
you're in luck because I'm going live on Wednesday night, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern time, 6 p.m. Central time. Uh, then you can do the math for everywhere else you are in the world. Um, but that is every Wednesday. And uh, we're going to be doing some watercolor pencil fall treats. So we're sticking with the fall elements if you want to join us for that on the Cubixel app. Um, but again, December 7th, We'll be going live again with Learn With Michaels to do some holiday ornaments. So another fun DIY project that I hope you all enjoy. Um, but like I said, I hope you all enjoyed this one as much as I did. Thank you so much for joining me. And I hope to see you very soon. Bye.